we want to talk about this quickly. So this is a little clip that I seen online, courtesy of a DJ here in the UK called Elijah, who is most of you might know from Elijah and Skillam days. Um, I know him loosely because he knows some of my friends. Um, but I think at the time that we were kind of all hanging out, I wasn't necessarily the one trying to go out and make new friends and stuff. So I didn't really go and, you know, try to become friendly or whatnot. But from what I remember him in the scene and stuff, he's always been a pretty decent, cool guy, pretty level headed, pretty chill. And it looks like he's evolving into this other part of his life where instead of just being you know a guy that makes great tunes a guy that djs a guy that's an artist in his own right he's also deciding to be a bit of an advocate a bit of a speaker a bit of a commentator um in terms of anything concerning dance music electronic music djing in general and obviously he's got loads of experience that you can obviously impart and give to people and i feel like this clip that i'm about to play Curtis of his Twitter page was really telling and really for me was a sign that I think a lot of people have basically kind of been repeating but said definitely a sign or an indication or a pointer for me in terms of where I want to take my DJing because you know I'm in this weird place like I mentioned prior where I was playing quite often even though it wasn't you know I wasn't playing in flipping Burkhan every weekend I was playing in local bars and pubs here you know where I live and whatever it may be but I was getting opportunity to play every single weekend pre-pandemic right from like friday to sunday sometimes even sometimes thursday to sunday i was playing every single weekend without fail and it was great because even though i wasn't playing in great amazing places i got the ability to play in front of an audience every single weekend which i feel like improved my ability to dj improved my ability to read a crowd improved my ability to you know read a room to take people on a journey whatever you want to call it that actual stuff of being in front of people and playing is different from doing in your bedroom you can obviously be good and be at a certain level in your room but it's clearly in a performative act in some way shape or form and have the ability to perform in front of people especially if you want to go in that direction is really important and i got the ability to do that but then as soon as the pandemic hit that obviously went away and even at the time though i knew it was kind of perilous because i always thought to myself hey as great as i think i am I'm also understanding that these kind of places don't really need DJs. If they had somebody in there who could, especially if they had a bartender, that'd be even better because they don't need to pay that person, right? They could just have somebody who already works there basically doing it. But I was, I was, I remember a couple of times thinking to myself, like, this is daylight robbery that they're paying me 150 quid or whatever to pay in these places because they could effectively get somebody like myself or anybody else who's kind of has a love for music and who could just kind of every week or every couple of weeks just update their playlist, add some more songs on it, change around the order here or there and basically play, put together a playlist which is very easy to do for the entirety of the day that they're out because if, if you imagine in a bar there's no mixing the whole tunes play all the way through and unless the bartenders don't like a particular one they can skip it but for the most part you're playing the entire tunes all the way through so if you need or if you're kind of you know if you're about this life you can put together a pretty decent pub set with your eyes closed in terms of kind of from the time that they open up from often the time people start coming in and wanting to dance every around 9 p.m all the way until one or two you could easily put that together or even 12 it's not hard so i thought to myself oh, as soon as this pandemic hits and these guys realize that they don't need us because they're going to be putting playlists on because they don't they can't hire djs to come and play because there's no dancing or anything it's going to change and it did and as soon as the pandemic happened i feel like all my gears kind of dried up maybe because of that and also maybe because they might have thought i was crap anyway and it's an excuse to get rid of me who knows but in general that's been the thing that's kind of been affected my ability to maybe go out and play or do mixes and stuff or put them up or whatever maybe or do live streams because in my head i always kind of ascribed the idea of playing as part of the journey to get to a place that I want to get to which is playing in Panorama Bar playing at you know Club Division Air playing at Flippin Robert Johnson playing at Fold all these places I want to play at this is the kind of the goal so when you're mixing and you're doing a live stream the idea is that okay this should hopefully be the one of the things that's going to get me closer to my goal but listening to this talk from Elijah kind of made me realize that no when I got into this thing as great as it was to promote parties and get free drink tokens and put on events for my friends and put out cool flyers and have people turn up and say that they loved your party that was always good the part of it that was also amazing was for me the discovery of music was being just 
a geek about music, caring about who produced something, um, caring about how something was put out, caring about how the albums were sequenced, thinking of, I remember before, I'd be thinking of, I'd be listening to music and thinking, oh, right, that'll go sick with this song. And not even thinking about how I could play out that mix or transition, just thinking, oh, that actually sounds similar to something I heard the other day, or these things would actually go together, or look at the trends happening in music at the same time. Those things I was thinking about. And it wasn't always about making it, making it, and having your arms splayed out, you know, behind the decks, looking at Carl Cox. It was always just about enjoying the music and enjoying all that sort of stuff. And I feel like Elijah's point here in his um, Twitter thing that he put out, which he's got the the image that says there aren't enough DJs, another one called Casually DJing is Good for the Soul, I think. It's really um, hits home. And I think a bit of his speech here kind of hit home for me in the truest sense of the words. So I'm going to play a bit of what he's to say and I'm going to play a bit of the explanation and then obviously close it with some of my comments towards the end. But this is Elijah Curtis of his Twitter page. You're fun. Hmm. Uh, I had so much DJ angry DJs fighting me about this. <laughs> I, I know that like there's no angry DJs in here, because like, you wouldn't come to something like this. Anyway, um, more people DJing casually is good for music. Yeah, like all DJing is is creating and caring about your collection of music and putting it together. It, like the dance floor bit comes as well if you want, but. The deep care of what you listen to, to me, is like the fundamental thing behind DJing. There's some people here that have got sick music in their stories all the time, but they're not DJs, but they care enough to like share little clips of st like their, what they're listening to and all this kind of stuff. I notice it. I'm like, you listen to good music constantly. Like you are, you've got a DJ mind, but you're not like may maybe applying it in a career DJ way. Like book me, like, you know, I've got an agent, all this kind of stuff. Like all of us here are probably DJs in some form or fashion. You wouldn't say get in a car and just listen to anything. Like you do, you do care what's coming into your system. Which is amazing. Definitely something that I kind of um, can ascribe to. And then scrolling down, he kind of expands a bit on the point here. <clears throat> More people DJing casually is good for music. DJing is just creating, sharing, collecting music. And we've been doing that on computers for over 20 years now and recognizing some of our like ways of putting things together as DJing now, I think um, can take the whole medium and art form forward. Um, people think that DJing got democratized through like CDJs and controllers and virtual DJ. But to me, it got de democratized when um, MP3s became available, Napstar, Winamex, Kazaa, all of those kind of things, and the iPod. <laughs> like once you could make your own playlists yourself, um, use Winamp and kind of technologies like that, then everyone became a DJ. So now I don't view DJs as just the people that you know are in clubs, disc jockey in an old school way. I view uh, DJs as people that really deeply care about music, the way it's laid out, the way it's created in their lives, the sound systems that they play it on at home. And um, yeah, more people DJing casually is good for music. You should. And I agree with him. And I think for me, this has been a real sign in terms of how I want to position the things I want to do going forward, how I want to approach things because the, the brutal honesty, the brutal kind of facts of life and honesty about the situation is we don't all get to DJ. We don't always, we, we, all won't get the opportunity to play in some of these illustrious places that I want to play at, right? Whether it's festivals, whether it's big clubs, we all won't get the opportunity to have our arms splayed out wide like Carl Cox behind the stage somewhere, lapping up all the adulation as we play other people's music. It's just not going to happen that way. Life isn't fair. Um, you know, you can be the best technical DJ that you, that you want to be and somebody else can overstep you because of whatever else they have. It doesn't matter what the reason is, but just life isn't fair. Things don't work out that way for everyone. But... For me, it's never really been about that kind of thing. I think once you get into the scene and you start to get close enough to people, you start to see some of the higher ups. I think what can tend to happen, especially when you're somebody like myself, who's more of a, I'd say, sync kid than somebody else who's trying to make it in the artist side of things. Because I, you know, even if I wasn't an artist, I still want to be going to raves and going to festivals and whatnot and going to clubs. I think what ends up happening is that once you go out a lot, you start to see a lot of really good people. But then once you go out a lot, also you start to see a lot of people playing in good places who aren't good. And if you have any kind of weather all about you and you're somewhat kind of coherent in your thought, there's no way that you're not going to think, I could do that. 
especially with someone that's not good it's pretty easy to say that because they're terrible um in your opinion because you've seen so many different people you've got enough of a um you know references to kind of go on in terms of oh i've seen this person play they're not good as that person not good. i mean you could just get a judge of it or maybe to your taste and it kind of makes you think hey i could do that also but unfortunately because it's one of the easiest fields of music to kind of get started in the barrier of entry is incredibly low right dj equipment's getting cheaper and cheaper by the year it's just incredibly crowded like you know i'm sure most people in metropolitan cities most people in hipster communities will attest to the fact that they have a lot of people within their social group who they can regard as djs right if they were to put up a post that said hey i've got a house party going on i need someone to play i'll give you 100 quid there'll be you know there'll be more than 10 people in your inbox telling you hey i can play i can play i can play i can play so clearly there's too many djs and maybe not enough clubs and with the amount of clubs closing especially in the uk it's getting harder and harder to play in places. There's also never really been a real culture. I feel like with resident DJs and promoting local acts in the UK, especially in London, especially when all the drinking and drug rules came into place, I feel like a lot of clubs focus more so on booking big people because they have limited opening hours. So they have to guarantee that they're going to make their buck back. They have to guarantee they're going to be able to pay wages. And you just can't guarantee paying wages when you book resident DJs. You have to book some of the bigger names. I get it. So the ecosystem around it is kind of hard to get people to go from a point where I'm at to suddenly playing at big festivals and big stages. It's just difficult. It's not a straight path. It's not even a wiggly path. It's just a very odd path to get into. Who knows how you get there? Who knows? Because, you know, I myself could be doing a live stream on my channel one time and uploading on a consistent basis. And somebody from agency would be like, hey, we want you to play at this place. And then suddenly I'm playing there. And, you know, maybe on paper, I have no right to be there, but my experience told me I have to be there. But then how did I get there? Because I have a channel. Yeah, I mean, there's no real rhyme or reason behind it. Everything's kind of messed up. You hear people saying they kind of were toiling away in the slums or wherever they're from. They get one boy room set and then suddenly now all the agents, all the bookers realize that they're alive and they're getting booked all over the place. It just happens by randomness. It happens by luck, happened by connection. We don't know. There is no clear way. But for me, the love has always been about the DJing act itself, about being able to say that you can mix, being able to say that you can put together a set, being able to record the set, put it out, let people listen to it, be able to discover new music. And for me, the music thing has always been a really interesting part of it because I kind of always prided myself on the fact that I had really good taste. And most of the reason why I had good taste in music was because of DJing. Like I grew up in an area where I was listening to majority the, the the yeah the majority of music i was listening to growing up oddly enough was music i listened to on pirate radio which always happened to be garage which always happened to be jungle which always had to be dancehall which happened to be r&b those are the things i used to listen to man pick up the entertainment crew on deja back in the day that's stuff i used to listen to on a constant basis so when i got into djing it was easy for me to draw from those kind of genres because stuff i listened to but then when i started to kind of evolve and start to get more interested in djing i also started to be interested in other genres you know techno the houses all that sort of stuff but i feel like that also extended into my ability to listen to everything like recently i listened to the taylor swift album in full because i just like music so there's some tracks on there i like some tracks i don't like but that curiosity of listening to stuff wouldn't have come if i didn't dj right so my whole entire library of music is full of so many different variations of people i listen to that I put in playlists that i want to listen to when i'm going to gym and shit and most of it comes from that basis of just djing for the love of it and i feel like i've kind of lost it because i was obviously trying to chase that kind of booking and those kind of appeal which obviously is great and i'm not going to turn it down if it comes along the way but in general part of the reason of me doing what i'm doing on the DJing side of things recording mixes and live streams on my youtube channel and putting those out and putting you know um turning those live streams into mp3s and putting them on soundcloud the reason why i'm doing that is because i want people to hear the stuff that i play and to be impressed by how i dj not because i want oh you know people to could see that and kind of take that to a book or somewhere and say oh can you book this guy that's obviously amazing but the main thing is to share my love of playing and i feel like that reminder from elijah was definitely needed especially now that i'm kind of thinking about going back out again and getting myself back on that kind of wagon and streaming again because i've been kind of slacking for a while but especially when you go out there's no way you can't get inspired going out to places you know i've just been out to fabric of course as i mentioned at the continuum um label night was it like continuum and flipping sorry blueprint records night seeing flipping renee wires and dave clark play was absolutely incredible so there's no way you can't not get inspired by that sort of stuff and that kind of makes you kind of fall in love with the thing again but the thing itself is already fun 
being able to being able to you know stand behind a pair of cdjs for the first time and figure it out is fun being as over standing in front of a mixer a midi player is fun it's all fun figuring out what cable goes where is fun how to load tracks um how to prep your tracks on record box like crates like losing crates you know making playlists sub create all this stuff is flipping fun to do honestly it really is fun and it's something that i kind of want to get back into for the love of for the sake of just doing it not because i'm doing it with an outcome in mind that's all i want to be I want to be devoid of, of an outcome. I want to be devoid of outcome and just enjoying the process for what it is, which I was doing prior, but I kind of got caught up in the idea of being the guy out with his arms splayed out behind the deck because it's not that really important. Obviously, it's great to do, but the major part of it is just being in love with the tunes again. So big up Elijah for that reminder. I appreciate